I've been really interested always in in asking questions of people. How do you get through a day? What do you what do you do? What brings you joy? What what makes your life meaningful? And what are the struggles? And how do you how do you manage with those struggles? People who are overlooked are often the most vulnerable, but many times they're the most heroic and I think we need to pay attention to them. One of the things I've always wanted to look at in my films are ordinary lives. I certainly come from a very ordinary background. My dad was a fireman, my mom was a homemaker. No one I think would have said if they came to Des Moines, Iowa, we must meet this family. They are leaders in the community. I don't think we were perceived in that way at all. And yet, I think my parents led noble lives. The way I got started in film was a fluke. I had been preparing to be a high school English teacher. And my husband was taking a law job in New York for a month. And I thought, I will be a camp counselor in New York for a month. So I contacted friends in New York who said, you'll never get a job as a camp counselor in New York. Those are sewn up for years. What else would you like to do? And then I said, I, make movies. Now, I'd never said that to myself. I have no, really, I have no idea where that came from. But suddenly it was out of my mouth. And once it was out of my mouth, I thought, well, yeah, that would be fun. And then I started talking to friends. And it turned out a close friend of mine had a close friend who worked in film in New York who gave me some names to contact. And one of those names had an opening for exactly the month that I was going to be in New York for a scriptwriter for an educational documentary. And I did it for a month and I loved it. And I felt in doing that that I had come home to some part of me. Here I am with my family, Rafi, Amira, and my husband Avi. We live in Cambridge, Massachusetts, famous for its ethnic diversity. We don't stand out as Jews here, we're just part of the mix. This is my mom. She brought us up in 1950s Iowa, where conformity ruled the day and more than 99% of the people were Christian. I find myself between the worlds of my mom and my son. So I'm going back to Iowa to figure out what it means to be a Jew, a yiddle in the middle. I did not want to make a personal film. No, I had no intention of doing that. And I really had to fight with myself because I understood that I was saying things that people didn't want to hear. I guess I was in part saying things that I didn't want to hear. And I thought, am I ready to do that? I understood ultimately that doing it in the middle was really important for me because once you expose yourself, once you're vulnerable, you've done it. There's no barrier in your way in future films. So I think it gave me a lot more empathy, it gave me a lot more understanding of what documentary film is. That's number one. His name is number we lived in Boston and the East Coast for almost 40 years. And once we came here, we were both fascinated. I felt as though there were a million stories, a million different people, a whole way of living life that was different. And I was really eager to put that on film. I told Kanalu about the fruits of my research and how excited I was and how I was sure we could get funded and I could see a film there. And he, who was in a wheelchair, he was a quadriplegic, leaned back in his wheelchair and said, I don't think we should look at Hawaiian, I think we should look at pigeon. And I, it took me aback. And I said, why? Why all of a sudden should this be a film about pigeon? He said, without pigeon, I would cease to be whole. And the power of that remark just knocked me for a loop. 
I thought, oh boy, if he feels that strongly, there must be a, there must be a story here. Get people ask, what's pidgin? Pidgin one language we talk in Hawaii. More than half the people here, different from Hawaiian. Maybe a little bit like English, but get all kinds of stuff from other kind of languages mixed in, like from Hawaiian, Cantonese, Portuguese, Japanese, Korean, Filipino. You know, other people when work the plantations. You go talk story with everybody out there. You're not going to use standard English. You're going to use pidgin for, for share your heart. I was exasperated about a lot of things that day, but one of the things I didn't think about was the depth of the water and being careful. And I did a deep water dive into about four feet of water. The timing of his accident and the birth of Hawaiian nationalism coincided. And that became an avenue for him to see possibility and to see hope. Penelope is right there on that front line, exactly where he belonged, right there near the center of the picture, in front of television cameras, in front of thousands and thousands of people. And so I wanted to explore that in a film, and I ended up then doing a film about his trauma and recovery, and how that linked, and how he saw that link between the trauma and the recovery of the Hawaiian National Movement. And I do believe that in his heart, Kanalu saw his own life and the life of our people as mirror images of each other. I don't want to make it seem as though documentary filmmaking is the easiest thing I've ever done. It isn't the easiest thing I've ever done. It's one of the hardest things I've ever done. Each film has its, has its special challenges. Each film has its moments of where I say, I don't know, maybe, maybe I sh shouldn't move forward with this. Maybe I can't move forward with this. Often what helps me, especially when I've re gotten rejected for a grant, is to indulge feeling bad for a few days and then to step back and say, will this film make a difference for other people? Is this serving an audience? And, and so is there a, a stronger purpose to this film than my just seeing my name in lights? And the answer is always, well, if yes, there is, there is. And especially when I can see that, that helps me move forward. People often don't say no when you say, I'm thinking of making a film about pigeon, for example, is it okay if I come and talk to you? Mostly people say yes, and that's, that's a gift. That's a gift to have a world open up um, and to allow you entrance. And that has never stopped being a miracle to me and also being something that's just expands my world, something I love.